Don't call us, we'll call you. Yeah, it's invitation only there, chicos. But to be the man, you gotta beat the man, and I'm saying, woo! This is what the greatest thing about sports is. You play to win the game. You are listening to The Review on the OSG Sports Podcasting Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Review. It's the Online Sports Guys College Football Podcast featuring us, the Online Sports Guys, OSG J-Dub on the road in his family vehicle for those of you watching on YouTube. OSG, jo- OSG Nelson sitting in his casa in the sports room. Me, OSG Phil, sitting in uh, basically a grayish dull void, <laughs> otherwise known as the secondary office in my house. Guys, I'm going to cut straight to the chase here. We've got the same topic that we talked about last week. We've got to talk about this week. It's the elephant in the room. It's the move of Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC. Now that all the formalities are done, we got stage one early in the week when uh, both said we want to join the league. Then later this week, we got the league saying, yes, we're extending a full invite to you. Here's your rose. Yeah. (laughs) Basically, we had our bachelor bachelorette moment. Let me accept this rose. (laughs) I'm like, where do you even want to start? (laughs) I mean, I oh, what, what, what's best for business, brother? That's all I can say. It, it is. It is like the McMahon's. What's best for business, and it's you know all the B plus talent in the room. Forget it. it. It is bringing the A players to the ring, and what you're doing, you're 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 making sure that your flanks are sealed and everything's covered when it comes to the the uh, the Dow Jones industrial average and the the blue chip top 40 or top 50 or however many it is these days and uh the last i think the last two blue chippers on the board that were in, in desiring of a rose were oklahoma and texas and so uh here here's a rose you've been invited to the ceremony and so now uh i i think the dance card is full for the sec notice i said the sec not the southeastern conference because i think we're going to have our kentucky fried chicken kfc branding moment once Oklahoma and Texas are in for real, uh, it'll be the SEC. The SEC. It'll be that. Just in time for uh, you know a, a TV deal, perhaps to be renegotiated on several fronts. But J Dub, that's just me. The last two roses on the board, I think, were handed out. And the funny thing is, you know, how do you know the Big 12's in trouble? Well, when Texas and Oklahoma decide to leave, they issue a joint statement. <laughs> say that they're leaving the state. You know, they, you know, these huge, massive brands, these blue chippers, like John talked about, issued a joint statement together saying, you know, hey, Big 12, see ya. Peace. Um, and so I thought that that was an interesting thing that they didn't do it individually, they did it by themselves. But yeah, I think, I think, you know, the dance card is full, the gates are closed. Um, there's nobody else on the board. Even if you look at the, the, the existing properties, you know, we've talked about several weeks now. Now, Clemson and Notre Dame, they're tied to, tied to the ACC. I think this move to the Super Conference of the SEC for 16 teams will create that pressure that Notre Dame needs to officially join the ACC. I think that's going to happen. Uh, I, I think Wilkie and I, Stereo J-Dub, have a, a different opinion than that. But, but then you look at even like Big Ten, you got people like Michigan, um, Wisconsin, you're looking at West Coast with like Stanford. And I mean, if they were going to join the SEC now, there had to be some kind of power shift to where they had to, you know, release themselves from their own conference. And then the SEC would have to give one of theirs back uh, by Tennessee, you know, by Missouri, you know, go join that other conference so we can take this other guy. Um, but notice the SEC didn't invite just anybody. Kansas, is, Kansas, Kansas didn't get a rose. So, you know, they're looking for those, <laughs> big, hit, those big heavy hitters. And I think that that's why, you know, uh, Greg Sankey went out and got exactly what he wanted. Well, guys, let me let me let me put it to you like this. Did we just have our first college football NWO moment? <laughs> Where everybody, where where the big where the big boys all go, he, all, the big stars all go heel and turn on everybody else. 
And who's Hollywood Hogan, brother? Sankey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will agree with you. I agree with you on that one. I, I think the NWO reference is a perfect reference because, you know, everybody, you know, there's the old phrase: they hate us because they ain't us. And I said, ain't A I N apostrophe T. The Southerners <laughs> know what I was saying, but people outside the SEC are looking at inside with envy, with greed, with you know, hey, you know, they're evil. Yeah, because they're on their opposite sides. But people in the SEC are going. Our brand just just jumped up. Our revenue sharing just jumped up, and so yeah, this is an NWO moment for everybody not in the in the SEC. John, for the we know that fans outside of the conference generally have been envious of the comp of the SEC. They've you can, if you talk to somebody up in Ohio, you talk to somebody who went to an ACC school, and they're all like. We hate them. Why, they're not what they think they are. Is this going to quiet that or is this amplification? No. Amplification. This gets dialed up to 11, brother. I mean, this is Nigel Tufnell lead guitar and everything. Where, I mean, you've already, you, I guarantee, let's see. All right, let's see. Let's see. Who would be some of the first ones to sit there and, and wag their finger? Uh, Harbaugh, comma, Jim, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ryan Day at Ohio State. Uh, I'm sure that uh, some of the coaches in the ACC will be more than happy to sit there and say some things. I was thinking uh, Dabo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he's he's never been uh, demure uh, about any no. kind of a viewpoint. No. Uh, happy to share his thoughts. The the <laughs> the uh, the not so great eight that are uh, a part of the discussion now. And, and try, have them trying to figure out where their home's going to be. Maybe a Matt Campbell at, at Iowa State says something. You know that Gundy will say something. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. And so will Jimbo, your favorite person. Yes. Yay. He'll say something. He's but, in the SEC, but he's still going to say something. Notice Texas A&M went along with the pack. After their initial statement, the, the, uh, the athletic director said, yeah, 12th man will be ready. That was what should have been said from the beginning. 12th man will be ready instead of your first comment and then coming to the 12th man will be ready. Yes, we know that the reason that you jumped from the Southwest in the, the Big Ten 12 all the way over to the SEC was to escape Texas. All I have pictured in my head now is Ross Bjork doing the NWO for life signal. The man you have all been waiting for! <laughs> <laughs> SEC for life. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but I kind of want to jump into something you said earlier, Phil, about someone who either played for a conference outside, et cetera, et cetera, and has a problem with this. I played for Wake Forest. I'm a Tennessee fan in the SEC, and I'm also a Kansas fan of the Big 12. I personally don't have a problem with this because it, it's, it's about money. It's about branding. It's about, you know, TV rights. I think this is the start of something that we have been pro- – uh, we're losing J Dub here as he goes uh, through it. With the whole, there we go. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think this. So, of course, the second we say that he's back is when he gets lost. Yeah. But, but when, until J Dub. I mean, it's. If I'm a member of any of these conferences, what I do is I, I you know, for that moment in, that they're in the sun and, and the SEC is bringing in those two dance partners, what you want to do is you want to remain just as relevant. So what you're going to do is you are going to say whatever you need to say in a public forum to continue to make your school relevant in the public discourse. And if that means that Oklahoma State says whatever they're going to say, kicking and screaming, if you're, if you're Mike Gundy, and you know he will. You know that T. Boone Pickens will probably release release several statements about it, and he will. Dabo Sweeney will say things about, woe is the ACC. Brian Kelly will probably say, woe is Notre Dame now. Oh, the SEC is going to get all of those, uh, all of those uh, positions in this new 12-team playoff. Well, because you all went along with the notion that was brought to the floor about how it will be better for college football, and it will be, I, I think. 
You went along with it. The yeah, bit- I think something that I came across uh, over the weekend that was interesting is a comment made by in- new Pac-12 Commissioner George, and forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, Kleovkov. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, he, I think he got completely and totally uh, – he is freaking out right now. He is, but he also has gone on record as saying he wants to kind of put the brakes on a little bit here for um, good luck. The playoff expansion. Good luck. Yeah. It's, does he even have the power to do that, or is everybody going to just look at him and say, "Who dis?" Pretty much. I, I, it, it literally if for Gene me. Thank you, told. J W breaking up here a little bit on us, brother. The see way that, dial, yeah, see if you can dial yeah, back in, dude. Yeah, dial out and dial back in. Well, then, but I think that I think the notion of Klyovkov, he's the new kid at school. Everybody sits at the at the cool kids table already, and Klyovkov, Klyovkov comes into this, and he's like, "Hey, hey guys, what do you think about?" Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe oh, having maybe mac and cheese with with, with our lunch, and, and may, instead of an apple, maybe or you know if we want to, I know you guys want to have mac and cheese with, with all of your meals, and maybe ice cream or something. But maybe we should hold off on that because it's healthier for us if we just eat mac and cheese. You know, if we just eat the the apples, or, and, or is it more like? Uh... Can we kind of hang out and hold off here for a little bit until I kind of get acclimated and figure out what the heck is going on? Maybe we can wait a little bit. Oh, he's the new he's the new kid at school trying to sit there and make sure that they don't change all the menu choices until he gets until he gets to sit at the cool kids table. And I think that that's where Klyovkov is right now. I think that he's in. Uh, I think that Klyov, Klyovkov is in serious trouble, and just in the sense of not knowing what he got into. Mm. And I, I think that all of this discussion about playoffs and things and all this kind of stuff, uh, you know, you, you thought that you were hitting the ground running when you end up hitting the ground at like 500 miles an hour, j We're talking about uh, the, the Pac-12 commissioner, Klyovkov, and how we think that he thought that uh, he's like Bobby Collins at SMU when he took over for Ron Meyer. It's like you, you think that this train is going a certain speed when you're walking in the door, then you hit the ground and you're going, oh, crap, this is going a lot faster than I thought it was. Well, you can't put the genie back in the bottle and you can't stop it. I mean, you, you have to be able to deal with it instead of trying to slow the train down, in my opinion. It's like if Gene Sankey told Nick Saban to do something. <laughs> you're right. I think hey, what he wants to do is kind of put the break, put a slow down the role to an expanded college football playoff. We know the reason for why he wants to do it. The question is, can he? He he can try, but he can't do it. Literally, he cannot do it. I don't think he has the power. Plus, he's a brand new guy. No one, had, you know, Larry Scott left. You know, Larry Scott couldn't do it. You know, and I just don't think Klevkov has the cojones or the pedigree right now to be able to, to slow this down. Well, as I told John, I think the the first time he raises that question in one of their group meetings, the question back to him is, who dis? Yep. New phone, who dis? Exactly right. It's like, yeah, new job, who dis? And you are? Well, let me ask you guys this. The agreement here right now with the Big 12 says that uh, both uh, OU and Texas are going to leave after the 2024 season. They can officially become members of the SEC or the NWO uh, beginning in the – I think it, I want to say it's like July 1st of 2024 or 20, something like that. Do you think we'll get to that point or is this going to happen before then? Oh, before. Yeah, I think the I think the story was that the, you, they could pay 75 or $80 million each to the Big 12 to break their TV contracts and start immediately. So if this, is, if this happens after 2023, I'll be truly surprised. Red McCombs is going to dive into his wallet and he's going to look in there and go, you got change for 100? Red McCombs' name is on so many buildings at the University of Texas. He personally, it would not surprise me, if he cut the check himself and said, look, yo, go. That I mean, seriously, that's what I think is going to happen. Longhorns out? 
Peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Red McCombs will be like, you know, he'll tap his chest and he'll sit there, he'll tap it twice and go, peace. <laughs> and it's I mean, it not it Matthew McConaughey, another big, big teacher slash donor in Texas. Oh, and he's 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 already saying that he's looking forward to going into the SEC. Now, here's your here's your phrase that pays that goes off of what we're seeing with Austin FC, where it's Verde Listos with the Austin FC. It's Noranya Listos. That's what you need to see from McConaughey. And that's that's the next stage that you're going to get right there. Noranya Listos. Burn orange. Ready. He's ready to go. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. You ain't kidding. <laughs> I, I, I'm just fascinated by the whole idea of how this is going to play out because I just can't see college football saying, okay, oh, Oklahoma and Texas will go to the SEC, and then we'll just kind of move forward from there. Who's going to uh, stop them, Mark Emmert? That well, no, crazy. I'm not talking about even stopping them at this point. I'm talking about that the change, the – I guess galactic realignment, for lack of a better way to put it, that that's going to be it. Oh, no, 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 no. This is this is now where the conferences pick on the carcass of the remainder of the Big 12, 10, 8. And I mean, look, the look, the Big 10, the Big 12, 10 is on the side of the road after having just been hit by the, that 18 wheeler. And it is now up to the rest of the conferences to sit there and see, all right, so what what of this bird is worth it for us? What do we dive in and get, or do we just leave it alone? And well, there was, a re- there was a report that came out last week. The American, the AAC, is going after all eight remaining schools. Yeah, Rock I was going to get to Why that not? in a couple of minutes. Um, excuse me. It's interesting <laughs> to see. I burped, on t- I, bur- I burped live on a podcast. You did. <laughs> and on TV, technically. Um, there was some threats of legal action now bouncing back and forth between Bob Bowles being the Big 12 and Good ESPN. Luck on that. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's what? Signifying nothing. Who do you believe? Because I haven't, I, I kind of think Bowlesby's probably. He's fishing. Onto something there. <laughs> well, what? I mean, seriously, what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to yell at, at that uh, you're going to yell at the network that, you, that isn't right even your TV partner. You're going to yell at a network that's not even your TV partner and say that you took my two biggest. Dude. Nope. Well, no, he's, Bob, talk, Bob. he's talking about the idea of the a- AAC rating the rest of the big, the big eight, big 10, that, big 12. If, if look, if your two biggest businesses on the on the on the block decided to go and hang out with somebody else, and eight eight teams are left in your conference, and you would have to try to figure out a way to make yourself relevant by coming up with what are you going to raid the American to try to fill yourself back up? I mean, if I'm the American right now as the top go five, and I see that the Big Twelve ten eight is falling apart at the seams. I'm sitting there and I'm making the play for all those Texas schools to be a part of what could be really, I mean, if you look at it, the new Southwest Conference. That's my whole point. The idea that ESPN saying, hey, if you can get absorb the big eight or the big 12, if you can absorb the schools there, we'll make you a super conference and pay you X amount of money for it. That seems entirely plausible. Absolutely. Bob Bowlesby, Bob Bowlesby, doesn't realize that the Big 12 10 8 is out of business. It is out of yep. business. But yep. but but according to according to their legal um I want to say whatever you whatever you want to call it. Their one legal of their, eagles. According to their uh legal documents of business, they exist and as long as one team exists, they can call themselves the Big 12 for the next 99 years. And Great, have so you're the Big East all over again. Congratulations. They have, they have the right to file legal action if so they could. They feel somebody's tampering or somebody's trying to crush their business illegally. Well, then you're going to have to you're going to have to sue your individual members, Jada. What I'm saying is technically, Bolsby's right. Money cures 
everything. There will be a settlement. It could very well be that he gets bought out, paid out, whatever you want to call it. He's looking for his golden parachute, maybe. He'll get, and he'll get, yeah, because he's definitely going to be out of a job. J Dub, I just don't see that. I, they're not going to continue to exist as we know them. I mean, no. <laughs> We've lost him again. There he goes. All right, hit, hit it, J Dub. Oh. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Um, they, oh God, Bob uh, Bowlesby got. I think Bowlesby got played. Oh, by, he got totally played. And so I, I think that honestly, when you look at uh, the future of the Big Twelve, Ten, Eight, uh, it, it, you know, I, I see no. It's like I see no value of being a member of that conference anymore. It, it is going to dissolve as we know it. But in theory, could they not? Could they not take a, take the aggressor role and try to raid, for say a Houston, um, an SMU in Texas? They make themselves that that conference. I mean, technically, they still have the opportunity to do that. They they exist, and while they may not get the payout that they were getting, there's still money there. But would you want to be an afterthought? in a power five conference or would you want to be a part of the discussion in a go five conference where the four letter is saying hey if you get all of these folks in we'll make you i mean i understand bowlsby's fighting for survival i get it yeah i mean but it's also i don't know if you heard me before this this is like he's screwing it <laughs> no again. Because you can't. The cell phone signals here. We keep <laughs> cell phone signals on the road is keeping brother J Dub from being with us the whole time. It's like it's like he he goes into Emporia, Virginia, and he goes up into the foothills of the Appalachians, and then all of a sudden, yeah, which is like a dark void of anything electronic, pretty much. <laughs> try it to, try it again, Jada. Ah, uh, but I'll say. Where are I'm you, camp, by the way? I'm in somewhere with a whole bunch of trees in Southern Virginia, trying to cross into the North Carolina line. I-95. Yeah. We're approaching Dan. We're we're right outside of North Carolina, but yeah, there's no signal. But can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Right okay. now. So. <laughs> But what I was saying before is that that Bowles be trying to sue that it's on individual members. And he's screaming at when he knows his life is almost at the end as far as his conference is concerned. And if I was Kansas, I would love to be a part of the American conference, a conference you can go in and actually be competitive with and actually do some damage. Absolutely. But I just asked John this while you were trying to get your signal back. What's to stop them, the Big 12, if they can still, if they can fend off everybody trying to attack the carcass of what's left of them from trying to raid the AAC and pick out a, a Houston or a UCF or an SMU or somebody like that and bring them in? It still makes them viable. Yeah. I, I can't, yeah, they, they have one team available. There's, they're still the Big 12. But I just, I just don't see the reason behind it. Why don't, why don't you combine? Why don't you do the best you can? To, to survive, make everyone survive because there's no way a team's going to leave to go to the Big 12 right now. They're, they're a dumpster fire. And even if I was a Houston, a Cincinnati, these teams, I wouldn't do it. Hell, if I was Kansas, I'd get out of there as fast as my head will spin. You know, K-State the same way. Oklahoma State, Baylor, they have better options. The Big 12 is not it. And trying to survive is, is admirable, but you got to do what's best for survival of all the, the schools in the conference Combine, do something, play your play your hand. This ain't it. Trying to fight for survival by trying to poach somebody else. That's not that's not a viable plan down the line, especially when everyone knows your days are numbered. In my personal opinion. And and that and that and and J Deb crystallized my thought where why be a a name in something that is dying when you could be a part of something that is growing? Be a, be a part of a growth industry. Instead of sitting there and trying to put yourself in as a corner store in a shopping mall. Yep. 
<laughs> Isn't that not the American way, though, to have businesses that died try to hang on for dear life, see some of the fossil fuel industry and things like that? But that's a whole separate conversation. Guys, this is a good point to jump off here in the first half of the show. So why don't we do that? I'll do the obligatory promo really quick, and then we'll um, sign off for the first half of the show before we come back for the second half of the review. If you're interested in this podcast, you like what you hear, you have plenty of opportunities to find us. We're really easy to look up on the internet. We have a phone app even if you want to do that. And I say that because, John, if you're watching on YouTube, John is flashing his phone with that phone app in front of you. Just look up OSG Sports on Google Play or the Apple Store. You'll find us right there. Download it. It's free. And you'll get a notification every time we drop a new show, which for this show is roughly once a week. You can find us on social media. I told you at the beginning of the show where you can find the three of us individually. We also have a group account, the OSG Sports Twitter account, and the OSG Sports Facebook page. Look us up. Just punch in OSG Sports. Hit search, and we will show up. Like us, follow us. Um, I'm not going to say ask us to be friends because that's weird. Be a part of the uh, conversation on our social media yeah. platforms. How about that? That's a that better word. word. <laughs> <laughs> and we've hit the point now where we're going to try and make a little bit of money. Not a lot, but enough to keep us functional. So we're going to toss it to break here. You are listening to the first half of the review. We are. Uh, I was going to try and tease ahead to what we were going to talk about in the second half of the more show. Stuff. More stuff. <laughs> more, more SEC chaos theory. That and more when we come back to the second half of the review in roughly a minute or so here on the OSG Sports Podcasting Network. The OSG app is up and running on your Android or iPhone. Install the OSG app and listen to our podcast from college football, soccer, and lacrosse. What are you waiting for? Download the OSG app today. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, contact my friend Steve Apolinski of Apolinski and Associates. He's been representing individuals for over 30 years throughout Georgia and Alabama. Email him at steve at aa-legal.com or call him 24-7 at 404-377-9191. The initial consultation is free. We know that every driver is different, and a one-size policy does not fit all. That's why Country Financial offers a variety of discounts, so you get the coverage you need and the savings you deserve. From good driver to good student, multi-policy to multi-car, we've got a discount to suit every driver. Call Jason Wright at 678-568-6871 today to see what you could save. On Facebook at Jason Wright Agency, or by phone at 678-568-6871. Discounts vary by state. Policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. If he dies, he dies. Thanks for sticking around and making it through my fumble bumbling attempt at trying to toss it to the break. You've made it through the break. We are back for the second half of the show. And where we left off, guys, we were talking the kind of the elephant in the room about the new look NWO, the SEC, with uh, featuring Texas and Oklahoma. SEC. <laughs> so to speak, the Scott Hall and um, Kevin Nash of college football making it in, <laughs> if you will. Uh, if you will. <laughs> if you will. Hey, yo. <laughs> what you gonna do, brother? And we were talking, before we went to the break, we were talking kind of about the potential for rating of teams moving. And let me throw this one out there. Uh-oh. We talked a little bit about the Pac-12 in the first half. We talked about the carcass of the Big 12 in the th first half. Could those two merge? And if those two merge, could they form a league that could at least challenge the Big Ten and ACC and the SECs of the world? Okay, so here's here's my first thought, and here's why I don't think that'll happen. Honestly, it's bad enough from an Eastern time zone perspective. 
if you if you are the Pac-12 14, you're having to play games for a noon kick in the Eastern Time Zone. You're having to play games at nine o'clock in the morning. But That's doesn't not, this give does, you a central time zone footprint? But what I'm what I'm saying is is that for every that pushing yourself more east is desirable when it comes to, to eyeballs. But the fact that you would still have that western component and the nine a.m. kickoff for however many weeks it is and for however many teams it is, you're not that interested in doing that if you're an eastern partner. I think that if you're in the east, you want to monopolize as many eastern time zone time slots as you can. And central time zone. I mean, because p- folks in the central time zone, when you're dealing with either the the B1G or you're dealing with the SEC, that 2:30 kick, that five o'clock kick, that 6:30 kick, they're fine with that. But a 9 a.m. kick, if you're a team, say in an Eastern Conference, and you would have that crossover game with that Pac-12-14 team, there's going to be that time where it's at nine o'clock in the morning. And you don't want that because you're not going to get viewership. You're going to carry away from the morning programming in the Eastern time zone that we're seeing currently on networks like ESPN and et cetera. I just think it's too much of a pull away from maximum eyes if you mix with that Western if, with that Western partner. j I just think that it's it's not feasible. But J-Dub, is that really good? Gonna- is that really going to happen, Jada? Because the Pac-12 commissioners of, or the Pac-12 commissioners, the Pac-12 teams have already con- been griping about that kickoff, and supposedly that's going to go away. Well, if you think about it, if the Pac-12 and the, and the Big Ten, 12, 8, whatever it is now combined, you've got a conference that covers three plus time zones. Right. And you look at just travel and everything. You got the Central Time the Time Zone. Zone. That's just a monster, and, and I'm, I'm kind of on the side here with Nelson. That 9 a.m. kick's going to take away from every every bit of that viewership, unless you put like a rivalry game at nine o'clock where the people are going to get up and watch it anyway. But if it's just like Oregon versus Missouri, or you know, or Oregon State versus K State, no one's going to watch that game. But is it, but is that 9 a.m. kickoff even going to survive? Because almost every coach in the conference has been complaining about it. Uh, I mean, I don't see any reason. I mean. Give me a better, a better, a uh, better example. I don't see it leaving because if you look about a 9 a.m. kickoff for specifically your one, your East Coast crowd, I mean that puts it at one, a 1 p.m. kickoff. That's what everybody wants. So I don't see a way around that 9 o'clock kickoff that works for everyone involved. What's wrong with a 3:30 Eastern kickoff? You're already, you're, you want to go head to head with the SEC? You go right ahead. I don't think you have a choice. I just I don't. Well, Nine a.m. You have you have you have control of the time. Three thirty, you're going to lose every time going up against the SEC, even the ACC for that matter. I mean, the the ACC has danced. The, a, the, the ACC the- and all those other conferences have danced around that notion of leaving that three thirty time slot alone. You want to go about, you want to go up against the Big Bear at three thirty. You're going to lose because you're dealing with two decades of history and being locked in on that time slot. That, but that's you just, also have the weeks where, it, remember, the SEC's whole thing is going to change here because they go off of CBS. Uh, again, yeah. And so once again, if you're that partner, I mean, this what are you going to, the thing is, is that you're dealing with but counter, we, counter programming from a different network, trying to go up against that 330 time slot that ESPN is going to want to bring into play once the once they get the SEC contract. That's writing suicide for them. But they they're basically programming against themselves at that point because they're still they own everybody. Unless it goes to FS1 because of their relationship with the Pac-12. Mhm. Yeah, that's True. the that's the only way that that you're gonna you're you're not counter programming against yourself is if you surrender a partner and it yeah. goes to Fox. That's the only way that you're gonna counter program against your that you're gonna get counter programmed against is if Fox becomes the major rights holder of that East West Conference. Yeah. 
Because yep. for all for all the great games the SEC usually provides during the college football season, you still got a few weeks where you're talking about games like South Carolina versus Ole Miss that end up in that prime afternoon slot. Because that's mandatory yep. from the agreement that was signed at the time. Yep. Right. And they'll they'll fiddle with that. You know, trust me, they'll fiddle with that to get the best matchups possible. What do you think is going to happen to the Big 12 network? That's they don't really technically have a network per se. Um, Texas has the Longhorn network, which I think the deal on that runs through 2030 or 31. And that's going to take a little bit. That's going to be an interesting well, play to see how. And, that and I think that I think that that money gets wrapped into the deal. I think yeah. that yeah, so that way I think that the Longhorn Network as we know it will cease to exist. Does it, it roll may, into the SEC Network? I think it turns into one of those SEC ESPN Plus alternate channels, mm-hmm. like a streaming channel. Yeah, SEC Two. <laughs> Probably. I mean, you're gonna. It's gonna end up being in that rotation somewhere, but it as we know it, it will not exist in a revenue sense. So that revenue will get redistributed amongst all the partners that is invested in that network so it can produce all of its content on a yearly basis. I think that uh, that that money gets rolled over to everybody. How obscene is this money amount of money that we're talking about here? Are we talking about a $100 million payday per school? Oh, I mean... The SEC is already forking out $50, $55 million, I want to say, over somewhere around $55 million last year to all their member schools just from the TV contract payout. Are right. we looking at our first $100 million conference per for each team? I mean, I think it's close, Jada. Yep. And you, you bring in powerhouses like Texas and Oklahoma, it's going to jump that up. So, yeah, I'm not the numbers guy. We need to look you for that. But, yeah, I I – I think that if it's going to happen, I think now would be a good excuse for it to happen. I think with the with the blue chippers, like like John said at the beginning, come in, it's already going to make a already wealthy conference not that much wealthier. Let me change the subject here a little bit, although it's still kind of on the same topic. We're what just about four weeks, roughly twenty seven days away from the kickoff of the season in week zero of college football. Yeah. How is how imagine yourself trying to be a fan of one of the Big Twelve schools and having <laughs> Texas or Oklahoma come to your campus? Bring it. <laughs> what are you trying to What are you trying to say there, Phil? <laughs> what, they're already. I don't, I, don't, I don't want. I don't want Texas coming to Lawrence. They can stay home. <laughs> but what kind of a reaction are you going to? Are you going to get all the projectiles being thrown at them? Oh, dude, this goes back to our NWO discussion in the first block. You want the you want that toilet paper and the cups and the beer thrown at you. <laughs> you absolutely want that coming your way because, I mean, this is I mean, you want to talk about I mean, the rivalries in the SEC are heated enough as it is. You add Oklahoma and Texas to this. I mean, right now, I mean. But what Texas what about, goes to Baton Rouge, you get that. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about this year. If, if, they, if, if Texas and Oklahoma go in and run the table, right, and they basically finish one and two in the conference, that's going to shut everybody up. Yeah. That's literally, if they're winning, no one's going to say a word, especially Kansas. Kansas is not going to win a game all year. So, yeah, that's one team in the conference is not going to complain. Uh, maybe Oklahoma State might have some gruff with, with Oklahoma for, for that game. But yeah, no, if Texas and Oklahoma win, that shuts everybody up. Oh, absolutely. And, and don't think for a second that folks aren't going to be lobbying. I mean, it, in the, this Big 12 exit interview that they're going to be in, <laughs> yeah. every single road game you're going to get, you're going to get. I mean, look, all of those sideline parabolic microphones that, you know, we know exist, these away games for Oklahoma and Texas are going to be some of the most challenging games for the audio guy in the production truck <laughs> that will ever know. And it's going to be fantastic television. I mean, Bedlam this year? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Where is, what, what, well, i got to look that up. What, why are you doing that? One, about something. one thing uh, just popped in my head, what, what Nelson was saying. If, I'm, if I am a Big 12 school that's not going to the SEC, 
this would be my job interview. This would be my entrance exam for the next conference. Probably Absolutely. Very, who knows? I'm going to try to play the absolute best football I can in the absolute best way possible so that these new conferences are like, hey, I want K-State to be a part of my new conference. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I want Oklahoma State to be a part. They do it the right way. This is a job interview for them. And if I was the uh, uh, SID or the commissioner or athletic director or the coach of a sport, that's exactly how I would approach it. Do the oh, best guess you can, bet- do it the right way, and be done. Guess where Bedlam's played this year? Stillwater. <laughs> that's going to – I might what, – what day is that? When is that game? That is um, November 27th. Oh, after oh the after Thanksgiving a, weekend. Oh, that's a Saturday mm. over Thanksgiving. Whoa. I was like, maybe I can go out there, but no, I, I got plans that weekend. Hey, it'd be, it. uh, it'd just, be be, just being parked in front of a television for that probably would be appointment TV. Oh, man, that's that's going to be. And, you know, Mike Gunny's going to try his best to do, you know, to spoil Oklahoma's day this year. You, you want must-see TV? The uh, press conferences that week. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that will be something to see. Um, and and, and ju- I just don't, I don't want to throw this out there. This is Sark's first year in Texas. All right. So what was so what? How is how is he going to play this? Well, let me ask you this, John. Do you think that Texas may let Sark know that? Uh, this might all be happening if he took the job. Probably. I mean, yeah, yeah, I would, uh, yeah absolutely. I uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree. I think that, uh, you know, if you're going to take this marquee gig, then you might, you know, you might get these kind of things from the lost Dodds or, or somebody like that. This or, uh, or you know, anybody is a part of that uh, that that cycle. Yeah, you know, we're kind of thinking. Just, you know, you have that as part of the meetings and you're breaking bread. You know, you know, Sark, you're just an idea. We're spitballing here. What what do you think if we were to, oh, I don't know, leave the Big 12 and, and go to the to the SEC, a place where you've been before? You know about all these rivals. You, you know what football means. It just means more. So we're thinking that perhaps maybe just just spitballing, just thinking out loud here for a second. What if, you know, if you took the job, then, you know, maybe, maybe just thinking out loud, maybe a bit Southeastern Conference, you know, SEC, maybe just. Uh, How would you feel about that? What do you think? What would you think, Sark? And, and, and well, my question is, does this put more pressure on Sark now than would be? Or is, he, or is the pressure off on him right now? Oh, I think I think if you're in, there's always pressure at Texas, but I think there's that transitional idea of you've got to be as you've got to be at the top of your game heading into the Southeastern Conference. Sorry, the SEC, just so everybody. Oh, here comes Big Bad Texas. You know, one of those. It can't be just oh, Texas is Christmas. I think it buys them some time. Uh, I think if even if. As we all know, the standard uh, for Texas seems to be something that's unreachable for just about any any coach. Uh, they expect to be eleven and one or twelve and zero pretty much every season, and if you're not, you end up getting fired, which is why they've churned through so many coaches over the last few years. But I think this is a year where if the Longhorns go eight and four, or at least show a little bit of progress over where Tom Harmon left them, I don't think he feels the heat. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of what I was getting at because of that transition. Because if he was staying in the Big Twelve, you know, for for life, they're not moving without that transition. You know, I love Sark. I mean, you know, wish him well, but I think that you know the pressure would have been higher on him in the Big Twelve to stay than it would be now that they're leaving. I think it's that transit. I agree with you. The transitional aspect of his job now takes some of that pressure off. I can't say the same for Oklahoma though. I I don't think I don't think Oklahoma changes a thing. I do they John do they even need to change anything? I mean they've been one of the most successful programs in college football over the last two decades. No, but they need to win. They, they need to win a bowl game. That's what I'm saying. I think there's pressure. There's pressure right now in Norman. 
Well, I, what I'm curious to see is how they adapt. Because one of the things that has been held against them over the last decade is that they're not an SEC team with an SEC defense and can grind out a win. Did they Guess start- what? You're going to get tested now, brother. Do we find out if... The- is this where we find out if they're able to adjust to it? And something tells me they will. Well, I, I think it will be interesting to see if they start to uh, adopt that quote end quote SEC mindset going into the conference and you see it reflected in their play in the Big 12 10 8. I think that that might be. Do you start that philosophical change now as you lead into your, your change of address? Or do you just sit there and say, it's like, okay, we're going to do what we do. And then the SEC is going to have to uh, adapt to us when we hop into the SEC. But JW, you can make the argument that they're kind of moving toward each other anyway. The SEC has become more wide open over the last few years with spread offenses and things like that. And teams averaging 40, winning games 45 to 41. Whereas the Big 12 has always been that conference where you're having the shootouts and their adjustments having to be play a little bit better defense. They're already starting to kind of move toward the middle now before this even came, became a topic of conversation. Am I right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because you look at the, the – you have like the Spencer Rattlers and the Jalen Hurts of the world, that type of offense, you know, that they're running. Even if you look at Sam Ellinger in Texas last year, you know, they're not afraid to put some points on the board. But the thing about both of these defense, both of these teams is that their defenses were not SEC caliber, like you said earlier. You, you run up a, an Oklahoma last year or a Texas last year up against Alabama, it's like it's going to be like 80 to 40. Take the uh, over. And the, I oh. think they need to – so I think you, they need to really look at their defensive side of the ball. Their offense is there. Absolutely their offense is there. But I think their, their defenses need to shore down and really get a good coordinator in there in place that will bring that defense first mentality to a team like a Texas or Oklahoma. Otherwise – uh, Georgia, Auburn, well, in some years, uh, uh, Oklahoma, I mean, um, Alabama, and some of these other teams but, but are, would, have would have put up 60 on, on them. But are, are we generalizing SEC defenses because really, yeah, the Georgias and the Alabamas and some years Auburn and LSUs of the world – are stellar on defense, they still have their days where they give up 50 points in a game. Oh, yeah. And it's not the same 10 to 7 slobber knockers that we used to see just a couple of years ago. The world in college football has changed, and it's changed more toward Oklahoma than it has towards the um, super stout five points a game defense of the SEC some 10 years ago. But but here's but here's what I would posit, uh, Jada. Before I, I hand it off to you, Oklahoma has not been able to win the game in the Big Twelve, or if they have, when they get to the the CFP, for some strange reason, they lose a game that they shouldn't, and then they're just outside the CFP, and then they're in a a meaningless New Year's Day bowl. When they're in that final four, they get bumped out in the first round of the of the semis. So that that stigma is there until they can consistently get into this expanded 12 team playoff. Oh, and they will. And win and advance and get to the last game of the year, then and, and but think about it. Your comp, your level of competition in the Big 12 10 is far yeah. different than it is week by week in the Southeastern Conference. Yeah. So this is going to be a wake up call for both Texas and Oklahoma playing in the newly revamped SEC East or the you know the Western Conference, for lack of a better phrase, instead right. of the Western Division. I- well, you're gonna you're gonna get you know, wake up calls in your Western Conference probably half the time. This isn't the Big 12-10 where you sit there and it's like, okay, if I get through Texas, I get through Bedlam, I'm going to a bowl game, a big bowl. Well, I I think the big guys, the blue chippers you talked about earlier, they don't, they're not afraid of Texas and Oklahoma. Mm-mm. Alabama, Georgia, Florida, they're in the big game. Notre Mm-mm. Dame's not afraid of them. Right? Nope. So I think they have to prove themselves. They have a lot to prove 
Absolutely. Uh, they do. We have frozen J-Dub again. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we lost him again. Ah, poor J-Dub. This this is the, uh, the the show brought to you by Frozen Food. Yeah, don't believe it when Frozen cell- Feed. This is don't frozen- believe yeah. the cell phone companies when they go on TV and say we have the best 5G coverage nationwide. We cover 97 percent of the country. Sorry, I call shenanigans. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure J Dub's not in that three percent that they say they don't cover because he's on his way into North Carolina. But that's a whole other conversation. Yes, Danville, Virginia, home of the Danville Braves. And I hate to do this while he's not with us here for the for the kind of the wrap things up. John. But we're done. But we're kind of hit our time limit here, and we covered a lot of ground. There's so much, so many things we could talk about here having to do with this. But, but at that's some why point, we're we gotta, here weekly. At some point, we got to hit some previews. True. Um, maybe next week we start looking at some previews and get away from this because it's kind of dominated everything. But either way, we appreciate everybody sticking around. Um, You've managed to make it through almost an hour of us talking about the SEC, Oklahoma, and Texas. And pretty much that's the way college football is going to be here probably for the next few years. Why, yes, J-Dub, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, they will. Your audio is back, so we got that going for us, which is nice. Say, um, good, say, say good night, J-Dub. Good night, J-Dub. <laughs> good night, John. night, Phil. <laughs> night, John, <laughs> boy. <laughs> You've been listening to the review here on the OSG Sports Podcasting Network.